Well, you might be wondering, why are all, why are all the children out here? And uh, we have a special announcement this morning that we're going to make having to do with our children's ministry. And we just wanted the whole church family together to hear this. And uh, it's, a, it's a big day for me and uh, Pastor Dane, Sister Anaya, and, and Leslie, myself, and, and the church. Um, we've been uh, working towards following what the Lord has put in our heart to do. We've been uh, being faithful. And how many know when, when God moves a church in directions, it does not mean that our past directions were wrong. It means that God requires us to be flexible. How many know that it, it is a different world today than when we were children? Drastically different. It is so different from the, I've been here 16 years. From the time that I've been here, I don't even recognize this, this country much anymore. I mean, the, the enemy is, is really working. And unfortunately, the target of the enemy has always been the children and the youth and the younger generation. Well, we're going we're gonna to do our part, what God's put in our heart to do. And as a church, there's a fine line in following God's will. In other, in other words, we ought, we ought not get too far ahead of God. We don't want to get ahead of God, do we? A lot of times it's the right idea and the, and the right um, plan but wrong timing. And, but then also, we don't want to lay back too long either and not move. <laughs> you say, well, how do you figure, figure all that out? I'll tell you how. His name is the Holy Spirit. Amen? His name is the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit has, has put definite plans in my heart, definite passion and vision and purpose for us moving forward. And I'm thankful that the church has been I'm supportive of God's call in my life to, to lead the church. At Freedom in Christ Church, we have a, a little different structure than what a lot of churches have. We have a board, we have elders, and we have leaders. And, and, but our, our board and our elders and our leaders, they are pro-pastor boards and elders and leaders. They're pro-pastor. In other words, they support the pastor. When the pastor brings a vision and, and, and says, hey, this is what God put in my heart, they don't say, are you sure? I don't know about that. That plan stinks. <laughs> or let's vote on it. There are many places that have boards that they're not pro-pastor boards. They, they are boards that when the pastor tries to drive a vision, the, the board says, well, let's, they'll put the brakes to it. Well, let's just, um, you know, that's not how it's supposed to be. We have always been and will always be a spirit-led church. Spirit-led, led by the Spirit of God. And we understand that leading and that, that primary leading comes through the pastor. Now, we, we have the board that I have and the elders and leaders that I have, they, they can talk to me about anything. They support me, they help me, they counsel me, they, um, it, I'm not standing up here saying, I'm your pastor and I know everything. All I'm asking you to do today is look into my heart and see a pastor's heart. Because I know one thing, I am a pastor. I know I'm called to do this, I'm called to be here. That's all I'm asking. Uh, um, I'm, not, I'm not saying I know everything, but I know when the Lord speaks into my heart. And we've been working and driving and, and moving towards what God has called us to do. You know, but we need to do this together. You know, it's sort of... In uh, professional sports, or even college sports, maybe more college sports, say like a basketball team, when they're ready to come out on the court, they wait, and the music's playing, and, and um, then they'll say, someone will say, go, and then the whole team rushes out on the court, and uh, sometimes the players will play a trick on one of the other players. And the trick is, okay, when they say go, we're all going to hold back, and, and so-and-so is just going to run out there all by themselves. And it works every time, it's hilarious. Because those guys get out there and they're like, and the whole team's back there just laughing, you know. Sometimes that's what pastors feel like, though. We'll say, okay, guys, here's the plan. Let's go and, and go. And it's like, where's everybody at? <laughs> Let's go, you know. And uh, it's not God's will for it to happen that way. Amen. God wants us to move as a mighty moving force together. 
You know, it says in the Bible that in the last days that, that God's children will have dreams and see visions as the Holy Spirit moves and pours out his flesh. And I want to bring up uh, Brother Terry Connor just for a few minutes. Uh, he was sharing with me the other day what the Lord had spoken to his heart. And I believe that it wasn't just for me. It was for all of us. Do you believe that, brother? And uh, he's going to share that with us right now. Before I start, let's, let's have a word of prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, use your vision you gave to me to touch each and everybody in this church today. You convicted me when you gave it to me that I wasn't doing my part too. And hopefully everybody will understand that it's not to point fingers, it's actually what God gave me to tell you guys. Holy Spirit, move in everybody's heart. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. A few weeks ago, I was praying in the Spirit at the house. And then I was calm and seeing if actually the Lord was going to say anything to me. And he, he did. He mentioned to me about our building. And it really convicted me, too, because I haven't been 100% behind the building with actually my monetary situation of actually contributing to it. But what God put on my heart, he has this supernatural, he is the God of everything. He supplies everything until each and every one is in the church here, moves in his direction. And he doesn't care if it's a dollar, if it's a $5 bill, $20. He needs everybody's heart to be in it for him to supernaturally to shower his blessings on this church for our building. And it convicted me that day. And it really, and I found it, I went back and found this. That, that, that day, when Kenneth Coach and devotionals, it was about King David. And King David was anointed as a young teenager to be the king of, it, of Israel. But he, until God saw David as seeing himself as king, he did not move in that direction either. He did not move him in the direction to be king until he was till David was ready. And God is not going to do anything for us, his supernatural powers, until everybody is ready to move in his direction. Amen. He told me um, that he doesn't care about how much money it is because he supplies everything. He is our supplier. He can supernaturally create things out of nothing because he does. He created this world. He just needs everybody's heart in it, everybody. And it convicted me because up to this point, to this morning, I did not start contributing to the building fund. And I'm going to start actually, give, give, where our family's going to start giving to it because I'm convicted on, on my heart. Our children are in this world is really being bombarded by everything. If you look at today's news, <clears throat> you know, I just saw on the news the other day, two 17-year-old boys killed their mother because they were robbing her house, and she came in and surprised, and, and she threw her throat. That's 17-year-olds. We, I wasn't thinking of that when I was 17 years of age, of killing my parents. But we need to have that building for our children to have the harvest come in. And he also laid it upon my heart next Sunday, during the Easter Sunday, that we should stand out around where the building's supposed to be, hand in hand, or maybe, you know, if we can't get hand in hand, spaced out around it, and actually praying and seeing the building in front of us. It's already built. It's already done. God already built the building. We just got to believe it's there. Amen. You know, he, he, he wants to move. He <laughs> hears our prayers, but everybody in this church is not 100% into it, and I'm one of them. I was, and I'm not being up here being a hypocrite. I was one that wasn't 100% into it. But when I had that prayer, I'm 100% in because he, what he laid on my heart, you know. I just wanted to share that with you, you know, and hopefully it touched you like it touched me that morning. We'll share a few minutes. We're going to uh, split the service here with uh, myself and uh, Pastor Dane, Sister Anaya, and then we're going to let you know our big announcement. And uh, I really appreciated what the Lord had told um, Brother Terry, because that comes right out of the congregation. You know, it, it, it doesn't have to always be the pastor up here giving the rah-rah and go, go, go. And I understand sometimes people can misinterpret what, what, what he said or what. The, sometimes people, they say, oh, all the church wanted was, was my money. No, what if, what if what God really wanted was your heart? Amen. 
And so truthfully, um, it's one area where a lot of times people get confused on. We are called to do this together. And I believe in my heart that, that prayer is the, in, is the method that God binds us together in the spirit, prayer. Praying for your church, praying for your pastors and your leaders and one another, praying and getting, getting in touch with the Lord, something supernaturally happens in us when we pray. God changes us from the inside out. And we start to see clearer. We start to see through the mist and the fog and the trouble and the turmoil, and we begin to see our Father's heart. Our Father's heart has always been for the lost and been for the, the children. Our Father's heart has been for those who are weak and defenseless and those who need help and, and, and there's to, to get it from the church. You know, I have a heart for, um, they call them at-risk children. There's a lot of at-risk children out there, and I'm not going to go into the description of what would qualify for that because um, there's no need to, but a lot of children, they need, they need extra love in their life. Some of you could probably think of children that you can think of right away. They just could use some extra love some extra understanding, some extra wisdom in, in, in the things of God. That's what we aim to provide here as the church. And, um, you know, one, one thing the Lord put in my heart, it was very clear. He said that, he said, you know, if we don't teach our children to serve the Lord, the world will teach them not to. <clears throat> What's happening? Here's how fast the world is changing. When I got here, as a pastor 16 years ago, what was already happening in the higher education, the colleges, is that as soon as the children step foot on those campuses, on the campus of most colleges, even Christian colleges, they were indoctrinated immediately, not in Christianity, anti-Christian indoctrination. And, and, um, the horrible things, the way they see the United States of America and the way they see God and the Christian value, and it, it's just torn down. They believe that when those students come out of royal America or they come out of the Bible belts, they need to break them down and, and get them a whole new belief system. It's just that real. But today, it's just not the higher education. It's the, it's the high schools. It's the junior high, and it's the grade schools. That ought to hurt every one of our hearts. It's just, now not all teachers are like that, not all, you know, but, but a large majority of them are. And God wants his church to stand up and to be the strong pillar in our community. Look at the, um, the, uh, uh, entertainment, Hollywood. You don't see too many of them advancing the kingdom of God, do you? They're working against it. Politicians. There's some pretty messed up in the head politicians. You say, well, pastor, don't, don't worry. You, you might not be politically correct. I'm not politically correct. I'm biblically correct. Amen. I know I ruined my chances of being a politician a long time ago. I know I did. You're not going to be calling me Mayor John. I couldn't even get elected to the local board somewhere probably. But that's all right. God put me here. Amen. And my goal has never been to start a fight with the world. That's the harvest. My goal has been to be a light. And sometimes when you're a light to a mean and angry darkness, there... It's going to be just like Jesus. The Bible says they hated him without cause. But we got to work through it all. We got to be strong. Many, many churches today, their lights have gone out. Their spiritual light have gone, gone out because they, they've compromised. They have compromised with the worldly things. They're too worldly minded. There's no moving of the Holy Spirit. There's no, they, they, get, they bring in the things of the world. 
And, and I stand up before you to say this. Sin is still sin. It's still sin. And, and we have to be able to articulate God's will for our life without throwing condemnation. But if we don't speak the truth and we don't let the light shine out of us, speak the truth in love, how will they ever come to a place of conviction? If they never come to a place of conviction, they'll never do the most blessed, most precious thing in the world. And I know a lot of people, churches don't like it, but I don't care. I know what the Bible says. If they come to a place of repentance, well, their hearts are changed. Their hearts are turned. Since when did repentance become a bad word? Aren't you glad you came to a place of repentance? Aren't you glad you were walking that way? And then one day you got the word in you somehow and it hit your heart and you're like, oh my goodness, what have I been doing? What have I been doing? We have to be the light or they'll never have that opportunity like we had. And I don't care how much pressure's out there in the world and how much political correctness is out there, whatever's out there, we're going to teach the truth of the gospel, but we're going to do it in love. Because these children need it. This is the world that we are in. This is not, correct this, this is the United States of America now. There is a battle. You're in it. Whether you like it or not, you are in the battle. There is a battle for the soul of America, and the target is the children. We have to be brave. We have to move out in faith. We must not ever do anything in this church because we can do it. That's a big mistake. We do things because God instructed us to do it. We must not ever do anything in this church because someone else did it. Some other church did it. No. We do it because God put it in our hearts to do it. Small churches, community churches like us, are the backbone of America. The backbone. The Lord showed me one day so clear. There was a guy a long time ago that used to come into the church, and he never really settled into us. He never really got into our fabric and, and, our, and believed in us who we are. It's hard to live in a church if you don't believe in the church. It's hard to be in the church if you don't believe in the pastor. It's hard to get in, be in a church if you don't believe in the vision and the mission and the, uh, the call. It's hard. It's hard, for, it's, it's hard for everybody. So I, I just say get in or get out. You know, if I go find a place that you can believe in. And, and, uh, and I don't mean that in a mean way. I just mean that in, in time short. I don't got time dealing with you. Burn up all my time, all my energy, all my substance. And I need to be, I'm in the hospital. That's what I do. I'm in the homes. I'm fighting for marriages. I'm ministering to people that were given a death sentence. I don't have time for that anymore. It's just distractions. This uh, man that was in the church, he uh, just never really got into us. And he was a, a spiritual mature. Knew the word of God real good. Word of faith message. And one day he went to visit a, uh, a big time TV ministry, which I respect too and I really love. But he didn't understand that we're not a big time um, ministry on TV. We're a local church. There's a big difference. We, we love God and we preach the same word. But, but anyway, when they went out there and they came back, I was sitting in my office one day and I heard him out there in the hallway just totally building that ministry up. And I thought, you know what I thought? Oh, man, we're in trouble. He's going to compare us to that. The guy just, the ministry just paid off a $10 million uh, building. And, and I'm thankful for it. We need that. But I thought he's going to dump on us. And, and, and sure enough, he did. And, uh, but when people dump on us like that, um, 
I'll put, I'll put some pressure on him. And I put enough pressure that, they, that he left because he should have left. And, uh, but I was praying about it one day. There's nothing worse than having someone disrespect your life call and what we're called to do. And I was praying about it, and the Lord said, look, he said, those big-time ministries, if, if you're comparing it to a war, do you believe we're in a war? Those big-time ministries are the planes that fly overhead and drop the bombs of the Word of God, and they soften the enemy up. He said, my churches are the foot soldiers. The battle's won in the dirt. The war is won in the dirt. My churches, my precious churches, what he told me, are the, are the foot soldiers that go door to door, house to house. They are the hands-on children. Without the church, there is no advancement of the kingdom of God. People like us, places like us, <clears throat> how precious. <clears throat> what, what I feel good about <clears throat> is that God has allowed us to be a part of what he's doing. For 41 years, a little over four years ago, the Lord put in my heart to start making some changes and to start getting ready for the changing world. When I was a ch child here, this church provided me everything that I needed. When my children were, were here in this church, this church provided them everything they needed. Now we need to provide the next generation in a new world that they live in. When I went to, when I went to grade school, my, my grade school teacher wasn't telling me terrible things. My grade school teacher wasn't pushing Muslim faith on me or whatever else they do. Not all teachers. I don't want you to think I'm mad at all teachers. A lot of good teachers out there too. And so, the, and so the Lord gave it to me, this vision, in, in four stages. And this has been over four years. How many know when you follow the Lord's will, it takes time? It takes time. The very first thing he said was, he said, I want you to hire a uh, full-time children's pastor. I'm like, you hear that gulp? I was like, what? I mean, I'm the, I'm the, a full-time pastor, and re immediately my little self, my, my own inability is thinking, can we afford that? <laughs> Whatever the future holds for us, I'll tell you one thing. This is an important thing. It's going to take a leap to faith to get there. What, do you think God was just going to hand it out? It don't work that way. We got to obtain it. What belongs to us by faith faith that works by love. And so we hired um, Madeline Nero as our first children's pastor. February 1st, 2015. And the minute we hired her, guess what happened to our funds? Shot up. Shot up. And back then we're paying a mortgage too. We're completely debt free now. But we were paying a mortgage and another, another um, pastor, and, and our funds shot up. And God said, see, told you. Sometimes God needs us to take a step of faith before he can bring the provision. A lot of times people say, God, bring me the provision, then I'll take the step of faith. Some, you got to remember, there's a balance there. What's, who, who leads us? The Holy Spirit. And Pastor Madeline was here for a little over two years or so. She did a wonderful job. Wonderful job. Uh, her and I spent many, many hours. Count, I think um, sometimes she probably sat in my office listening to me to you like, mm. <laughs> I was just a rattle machine. I was hyped. I had the handouts. I had to step. She's like, did you do all this last night? I said, yeah. I said, Man, don't you sleep? <laughs> I mean, I was just like cooking. What do you say? They're cooking with oil or grease or whatever. <laughs> I was just moving, and, and the Holy Spirit was just bringing it in, and 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 because we were trying to establish something new for this new day, and that was the first step. That was stage one. 
Stage two was to then establish children's ministries and to have a big support team in the church to help, help uh, with these ministries. They see, the whole idea is that every, if all the children in here, they're all of our children. Your children and your grandchildren, they're my children too. I mean, I'm not going to take them home with me, but, but I love them. I have a spiritual responsibility to them. They're my children too. They are little people that are the target of a, of a world that wants to indoctrinate them away from what God's put in our hearts. And so we did that. We established a children's ministry and it's Kids Igniting Children's Ministry. Um, how many of you here are part of Kids Igniting? Raise your hand. Raise your hand up high. See that? Look at all that. You know what, what the, how the Lord put it? Thank you. You know how the Lord put it in my heart? You need yourself a small army. So it's not a little, a few people doing a lot. It, it, it's a lot of people doing a little or doing their part. And our ministry has, has taken off and it has grown and we've done really good things with it. And so we established the, the Ch Kids Igniting Children's Ministry. And then the Lord put it in my heart. He said, I want a Sunday morning children's church. I want those children to, to um, I can see it all in my heart, all in my mind. When, when the parents and the children come in, the children's church is right back there in the social room. But when the building comes, it's going to be over there. And those wonderful little children are going back into the social room. And uh, I know some of you might be disappointed to sit over on that side because you can literally hear two messages at once. <laughs> if you're leaning this way, I know their message is better than mine that day. <laughs> I've got to work on it. Sometimes I'm preaching here and I hear this thump. Ooh, what happened? <laughs> and uh, we do the best we can do. Some days there's 15, 15 20 children over there, newborn to five. And, but they'll be back there with more room, more space. But, but we wanted to do a children's church. And, and I, I could just see it that when, when the children come in with their parents, what comes out of that room is music, energy, energy, fun, something that, that lets those children know that they're not attending a, a funeral something exciting. And that's what we have. We're very proud of our, of our children's church. And then a part, another part of stage two was to, to have a nursery. And we did. We developed that Baby Sparks Nursery. But this nursery is open Sunday morning, Wednesday night, Sunday night. All three services, we have a nursery for those little children. If that don't put a fire under you, your wood's wet. Or else you don't have children, don't care. <laughs> but if you have children, you're like, woohoo. And uh, I mean, we, we've, for years, we've never minded the children bringing out, being out here. I mean, it was, it was good for that day, but it's better if they're in there, the little ones. Why? Because if they want to, they can win out here. <laughs> they can rule the day if they want to. And... Uh, um, so it's, it's better to meet them on their level. Do you think those children over there right now aren't getting the word? They're getting the word. And so we established that. And Sister Darlene Fisher runs that currently and does a wonderful job for us. And we have a Baby Spark staff too. See, at the church, you can volunteer for Kids Igniting Ministry and Baby Sparks or Passion Youth Group. Or you could you can do all you could do uh, the kids igniting children's ministry and the baby sparks combined, or you can just do one or the other, whatever whatever you feel led in your heart to do. But but we we appreciate the help. Amen. How nice is it when a new family comes in and they got a lot of young children that we can we can take their children and love them and they can sit there and just soak up the word of God. And so and the Wednesday evening kids igniting children's program began. And. Uh, it's a wonderful, uh, wonderful program that's still going on. 
And uh, Pastor Dane and Sister and I have been working with Passion Youth Group for this whole entire period here. They, they came in and they, did a, they have done a wonderful job with their support team. Our youth are, are well taken care of. But trust me, when I say our, our vision, the children, I mean the youth too, children and youth. The youth will not be forgotten in this place. They are very much a part of what our, we're doing forward. And then when um, uh, Pastor Madeline resigned, it, it just hit my heart like a ton of bricks. I told Leslie, I said, I, oh, I talked to, to the elders of the church. Some of the elders of the church got a clear ahead. And I said, let's go talk to Dane. He's a Raymer graduate. You, he's anointed, right? He's, you know, he's, and uh, let's go see. And so we got in the car and went there. And once again, I was like 100 mile an hour. I was cooking with grease or oil or whatever. <laughs> I had a whole package all typed out. And uh, he, didn't, he didn't know anything. We met him in the garage and he's like, okay. You know, he was excited. And, uh, um, but it was God's will. Amen. I'm thankful for Pastor Madeline. She did a wonderful, wonderful job. Amen. And without her, we could not have got, got it off the ground and got started. And I'm telling you, that woman worked hard when she was here. She has a lot of gifts. What she told me when she got here, she says, I'm the type of person, you show me the forest and I'll count the trees. That's good because I don't like counting trees. <laughs> and she did an awesome job. And then um, Pastor Dane's sister and I were able to just roll right over in that. And the support team was just so supportive. We didn't miss a beat, did we? We didn't miss a beat. We kept on going and, and, and did, did a great job. And so this, this, is, this is all over a period of, of, of um, four years. And so when Pastor Dane came on board, and uh, about a year and a half now, probably, or roughly about a year and a half, but for the Passion Youth Group, he's been in there four years. He's been working in that. And uh, Sister Anaya is involved in that, the whole team. Uh, what a lot of you don't know, you might know, uh, Pastor Dane's sister and I work with children. Dane, what well, Dane still does, but she does uh, at Hoffman Homes. They have more experience than what I could ever dream of with children. They have all the training, the, the CPR, the first aid. The, they, they know way more than me, and that's the way it's supposed to be because I'm not called to, to work with the children. I tried that once. It wasn't my call. <laughs> and uh, um, we're, we're blessed to have... Uh, we're blessed to have experienced, talented, gifted people that are called to be in that position. And so one of the wonderful things that Pastor Dade and Sister Anaya did was they brought in a Kid Nation program. It's a wonderful program from Rama. It's a word of faith, spirit-filled program geared for children. Many of you have seen it, right? And it has PowerPoint, it has music, it has all kinds of wonderful things. That, that program is not not only on Sunday morning, now it's on Wednesday evenings as well. And then uh, our newest addition, this is all under um, stage two, um, Sister Lori Gauntz has been taking over the Sunday evening um, program. A couple Sunday evenings ago, there was a couple here, a husband and a wife here, and I thought, man, they've been coming a lot. You know, I thought, well, I'm glad you're here. And she said, we have to be here because cause if we don't come, our, our little child gets mad. They, they, she, she loves Sister Lori. And, uh, and I, that's the way it's supposed to be. Go ahead, children. Keep, keep dragging your parents to church. <laughs> <laughs> and so that was wonderful. And so stage three of our plan was to strengthen and, and our existing programs, um, such as Easter extravaganza, um, Hallelujah Party, and to provide support for our summer picnics. The, the, the kids, kids Igniting got involved in our summer picnics and made it more enjoyable for the children and add new programs like Parents' Night Out and the Youth Lock-In and things like that. Now stage four, which brings us today to today, is to establish programs outside of our Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night services to have more of a influence on these children. This has been one of our um, big things. Now stage four has to have a beginning, right? So today, and I think we're not going to show those videos, Sister Denise. Today 
is the beginning of stage four. And so at this time, Pastor Dane, Sister Anaya. How's everybody doing? Okay, I just want to speak with you a little bit before I allow my lovely wife to explain what we're actually doing up here. Normally we're back there on Sunday mornings. Um, but just listening to Pastor John speak about um, our vision, his vision, and, and the purpose of what we're really, really doing here. I have a question for all of you guys. How many of you in here, by a show of hands, your life has been touched and impacted by Pastor John? Raise your hand. In one way or another. Keep your hand up if you trust and believe that God is directly giving him the vision for this community and this church right here. Keep your hand up. Everybody has their hand up. You guys can put your hands down. All right. Does everybody see the picture of that building up there on the wall? Go ahead. Turn around. Stretch your neck out a little bit. Look at that building right there on the wall back there. Do you think that we want to build that building so that we can say, Oh, look at us. We have a building too. <laughs> Do you think that we want to create a bigger space for us to have a social club in here? Yes. <laughs> well, hey, you know what? For your sake, you are right. You are right, Aiden. <laughs> Aiden, you're the man. <laughs> Got you, dog. Listen, please. A lot of people in local churches, they come in and, and something, something happens to them as they come in and they sit week in and week out. No matter how awesome the church may be, no matter how amazing uh, the praise and worship team may be, you guys, you three are just incredible this morning. Just uh, the power and the anointing and, and the songs that you guys pick and the way that you guys work together. I don't get to be out here very often to, to sing with you guys, so that, that was just amazing. But no matter how amazing it can be, you see it happening at Rama, and they got a whole entire band and a choir and people running circles around the church and doing backflips up front and, and all kinds of stuff. And no matter how awesome the message is or how exciting the praise and worship may be, something always happens to the lay people. They begin over time to feel insignificant or like they don't have a purpose. They don't have a place. Oh, well, I just come and, and I just sit there and I'm just the person that comes and sits there. What purpose do I really have? People then begin to compare themselves. Or, oh, well, I can't sing like Sister Lisa, so I, I, I must not have that purpose. And, well, I can't preach like Pastor John or Pastor Dane can, so uh, I mean, what good am I for that? And I can't handle all those little babies like Sister Darlene can, so, so uh, where's my place? Where's my place? You want... A purpose, you want something to live for, you want something to wake up for every morning, you want something to fire you up, you want something to propel you closer to God's presence in a relationship with Him. Link up with your pastor's vision. Marry your heart to His vision. Commit to it. Believe in it. Believe in it. And what is his vision? The children. The children. He already shows you by his life. He doesn't have anything to prove. You're in a hospital. He's there. Your marriage is on the rocks. He's there. Somebody passed away in your family. He is there. Three times a week, he's right here, pouring his heart out, teaching you what God told him to teach you. You can see that part of him. You can see his dedication. You can see his anointing. But he has a vision, guys. He has a vision. You want to feel like you're doing something, like you're a part of something, marry your heart to that vision. And his vision is the children. 
I'm not sure how in touch some of you may be with today's culture in America. The influences that your kids, even if they just go to school, the influences that your kids will get from other kids who are soaking in the world's influence is seeping into your kids' heads. It's getting in there. The things that our children are being exposed to, encouraged to do, and actually doing are growing more and more terrible at a younger and younger age. I shouldn't say this because I'm a man of faith, but it's terrifying. It's terrifying. Our children are made to believe that if you don't agree with and want to do and glorify and lift up all of the things of the world, which is ran by the devil himself, where do you think all these influences come from? Where do you think these people are getting these ideas for their songs and their music videos and their movies and their TV shows and, and, and just the culture in general? Where do you think all that is stemming from? One mind, Satan. It's coming from his mind, his heart. He controls the minds of those who don't believe, says the Word of God, right? His attack is focused towards the children. Pastor John is our shepherd, right? But let's take it at another level. Our children are truly all of our sheep. And we are all shepherds over them. We should protect our children, right? We should provide our children with the safest environment, the truth spoken in love. We should give them every possible opportunity to know God and have a relationship with Him and be close to Him. Because I'm telling you, if we don't, there are thousand people that they will see on a weekly basis that will be pulling and tugging for them to come and literally sell out their heart to the things of the world. And if they don't, they'll be picked on, they'll be made fun of, they'll be ridiculed, and they'll be pressured into doing it, and they'll be called lame, boring, loser, religious, fuddy-duddy, judgmental, whatever you want to call it, they'll call your kids. Why? Darkness hates light. It hates light because the light exposes the true intentions of a dark heart. This is the world that our kids are living in. Our pastor has a fire burning inside of him. And I and my wife are going to rally behind him. This is not our job. This is our life. Parents in here, grandparents, aunts, uncles, your children and their spiritual well-being, their mental, emotional, and spiritual health is our life. We have sold out the world and sold out to this cause. The world has nothing left for us. I'm asking you to find purpose in rallying behind our pastor's vision. If not for the children, for what else? If not for the lives of these innocent little kids growing up in this terrifying, evil, dark world, if not for them, what else is going to cause you to get up and jump into the river of the vision that is flowing right towards God's will? What, what else is it going to be? You don't have to come and sit here and just simply be. You could be a part of it. People say, oh, they just, the churches just want our money. Churches just want our money. No, we don't. We're just not magic workers. If we need to do something for your children, it costs money. Nothing is free, is it? Except for our salvation, thank the Lord. And they don't even cost Jesus' his life. We have a vision for your children. And we are going to do everything in our power, but we need you. We need you. Just like Brother Terry said, 
If you can only give a dollar a week, give a dollar. Don't we remember the story of the woman in the temple who came and everybody was pouring in all their gold and their jewels and all of their money in the offering plate and the disciples were like, wow, look at them and all the money they're giving. And then here comes this little woman who gave her last two pennies into the offering plate. What did Jesus say about her? She gave more than all of them combined. Do we understand how God works yet? If you got a dollar, if you line up with this vision, go and fill out on that form, building fund. One dollar, if that's all you have, building fund. And I promise the obedience of your heart in doing that, God will multiply that one dollar into thousands one way or another. He will. Because he wants your heart, your heart. If you're like, oh man, I don't think I can give $50, that's too much for me, then don't. But if your heart is in it to give any amount of help, anything for this cause for our children, I'm challenging you to do it. And don't just give the cause your money, marry your heart to it. Pray for this. Believe for this. Speak for this. Lift up your pastor when you see him. Lift up my wife and I when you see us. Pray for us. We are in a battle for your children. We are fighting a difficult force. And let me tell you what, from, from, from just a natural standpoint, we're outnumbered. We are outnumbered. But it reminds me when the prophet Elisha was, was with his servant, camping out, right? And the enemy sent soldiers to go and to kill him. And the servant woke up in the morning and, and said, oh no, we're surrounded. They got soldiers everywhere. What are we going to do? And the good prophet said, you tripping, bro. <laughs> you like that? Why did he say that? He said, you don't know what you even see, you don't even know. He said, God, open his eyes so that he can see. God said, okay. Bink. Opened his eyes and he saw angels and chariots of fire everywhere. Everywhere surrounding him. And then he knew that actually his enemy was outnumbered. Today I'm asking God to open your eyes. To open your eyes to the vision. To open your eyes to that one dollar, if that's all that your heart has to give, that it will be multiplied into thousands and thousands. To open your eyes. So, that being said, even though we don't have everything in place right now, that building, the, the, the brick and the mortar isn't out there yet. Does that mean that we're going to idly wait by and not push forward? We're not going to push the enemy back? We're not going to smack him in the mouth because they're messing with our kids? No, we're going to do something about it. We're going to step out of faith. We are going to extend our natural selves as far as we can possibly extend ourselves. My dad told me a story about, was it Jesse Duplantis? Jesse Duplantis was praying for a, a private jet. What do you need a private jet for? Well, he flies 10 times a week. All over the place, speaking engagements all over the world. So he's believing for, for an airplane. Well, he didn't have nearly enough money to have that airplane. But you know what? He believed for it. So he said, you know what? Even though I don't have my airplane yet, I'm going to still fly and I'm going to still go to the places that God has called me to do. So he went and he just flew commercial airlines. You know, stuck in between the crying baby and the stinky snoring guy, you know. <laughs> Middle seat and all that. Jesse Duplantis flying all over the place. Multiple times a week, sometimes multiple times a day. He pushed forward with what he had because he knew that God would reward his faith and bring to him what God promised him in a vision. 
That is exactly what we're doing. And you know what happened? Somebody came along and literally gave him an airplane as a gift. A gift. A present. (laughs) Hey, man, take this airplane. How often does that happen? I believe that our God is the way maker. He is a miracle worker. We're going to do our part. So it pleases me to introduce to you the director of our new summer program, Sister Anaya. She is going to explain to you what exactly that step of faith is that we are going to be doing this summer. You can go ahead and throw the slide up there, Sister Denise. Okay, so before I tell you about all this goodness, that gulp that Pastor John was talking about earlier when my husband and Pastor John told me that I was going to be up here explaining all this to you guys, I did that. (laughs) And they said, oh, you got it. You go up there and sing. I said, with my eyes closed. (laughs) So I'm here with my eyes open and realizing this is God's plan. So what do I have to be nervous about? Right? Amen. Okay. So this summer, instead of last year, we had a freedom week. And that was just a camp for one week. This year, we are going to have Freedom Camps of 2019. So we're going to have eight week-long camps, Monday through Friday, throughout the entire summer. So before I explain you all the cool, exciting things about all of it. I just wanted to shout right there. Woo! (laughs) I'm going to share our mission statement with you guys. At Freedom in Christ Church, our first priority is the children and their precious futures. We desire to use our freedom camps as a tool to give our children a spirit-filled, spirit-led, structured environment of love, togetherness, and learning. We will come alongside the parents in aiding our children in continued education, character development, emotional and physical growth. Most importantly, we will teach the children God's word and God's love every single day. The ultimate goal is to guide them to having a personal and intimate relationship with their Heavenly Father and to foster healthy relationships with each other and the church. So, in a nutshell, just to continue our relationship with all of you in joining together to raise our children and just to help them keep growing in every way possible. Okay, so our camps will be open at 7.30 in the morning and we'll keep the kids all day until 4. And our start date, if I can find it on here. Thanks, here. We'll start June 10th. June 10th, and the camps will run all the way through. Thanks. <laughs> One hand is hard to do. That. Thanks. <laughs> through August. August 9th. The only week that we'll take off is the week of 4th of July because a lot of people are on um, vacation and things like that. So we'll give the kids lunch. Well, we'll give them breakfast. We'll ask that they bring their lunch, and then we'll give them snack at the end of the day. But I'll give you a more detailed schedule of what a typical day will be like uh, at a freedom camp. So they'll come in at 730, and they'll get breakfast, a little indoor free time. And they'll do a Bible study in the morning, because each week we'll have one of the Kids Nation Bible studies that they'll do the whole week, led by Pastor Dane. Every day. Every day. (laughs) I'm going to preach 972 sermons this summer. (laughs) After each Bible study, they'll have quiet prayer time and a journal time so that they can kind of internalize and kind of see how they're growing on their own. They'll have some outdoor free time. And then we'll do a structured activity with them. We'll give them lunch. After lunch, they'll do a nature walk and some type of outside nature activity. After that, we'll come inside and do a continued learning activity. And then at the end of the day, we'll have circle time just to kind of see how everyone's feeling, what everyone learned for the day, compliment each other, and then snack and dismissal. Oh, I totally skipped something. <laughs> Sorry. After continued learning, we'll have the camp focus, because each, each camp will have uh, a camp focus and a Bible study that'll go with each of them. So we'll do the camp focus, and then circle time, and then we'll dismiss for the day. Now, the only days that are different are Wednesdays, 
is a little different because we'll relax a little bit and do a movie after lunch. And Fridays will be a little different because it'll be about a half day and then we'll go to the pool. Pool day! Yeah, we'll have a pool day every Friday. <laughs> All right, so I'll go through and explain each of the eight camps. I'll give you the name of the camp. I'll give you the theme of the Bible study that they're working on and also the focus for that camp. So camp number one is entitled God's Masterpiece. And Pastor Dane will bring the Kids Nation Transformed series to them. And their camp focus is art expression. So when they have that camp focus time, we'll be doing things like... Um, Mirrored image interpretation paint. So it's a really fun activity where you have a piece of paper and you just kind of splatter paint all over half of it. You fold it in half, and then when you open it back up, it's mirrored image. And the kids will have to use their creativity to, like, what can I see out of this? And, oh, I can make it into a butterfly or something like that. Camp two is, entitled, or is called Made in His Image. And Pastor Dane will be bringing the In Him Vision series from Kids Nation. And that focus is confidence in Christ. So just realizing who they are in Christ and growing their confidence and helping them grow. Like you said, kids are mean. I don't mean to say that in a bad way, but in school, kids can be really mean. So just helping them realize who they are in Christ and doing activities like um, ones called I've Got Your Back. So that day we'll make sure that all the parents know that's what we're doing and we'll ask that you send your child with a t-shirt that can be written on. And each kid that is here will sign and write something positive on the back of your child's t-shirt. And we'll write, I've got your back. So then they can always look back at it and look at all these people that have my back, all these people that are there for me, all my peers and all the kids that I'm growing up with. Camp three is called A Family United. And he's going to bring God's glue to the kids, and that camp focus is unity. So we'll just do any type of team building activities, whether it's a physical activity or kind of like a brain builder activity where you have to work with your group. So maybe giving them hints and clues and doing a scavenger hunt around campus. And they have to go out and find all these pieces of the scavenger hunt puzzle and then come back and put them all together and see how when you work as a team, look how quickly we got this done. But if we did it individually, you can't put the puzzle all the way together. Camp five, I skipped four. <laughs> Camp four is Mind of Christ, and Pastor Dane will be doing the Fruits of the Spirit uh, from Kids Nation, and that's m emotional management. So that's a really good one for all the kids to have, because just growing throughout, you know, the time they're small, tantruming, to the time that they're, like, older, it's just good to be able to recognize your feelings, what your body does when you have those feelings, and how to appropriately manage them. So just going over different coping skills that they can use or for instance a example of an activity is um emotion emojis so all the kids love emojis they're fun they like the turd one um mm -hmm. <laughs> but instead of having them look at all those emojis we'll have them give them a worksheet and they have to create 15 emojis and each of those emojis they have to represent a feeling so then they can like use them like oh my face looks like this when i'm tired so that's what i'm going to make my emoji look like <laughs> Camp number five is called God Strong, and Pastor Dane will bring God's Word Packs a Punch. And for that camp, our focus is exercise and fitness. So things like um, a really cool obstacle course that's really going to challenge them physically. Or um, we thought of something called a Freedom Mile, where they'll use the campus of the church here to run a mile. And that way, the whole time they're going, they're just like, oh, man, I'm so tired. But I can do all through Christ who strengthens me, you know. Um, I'm not sure if Pastor Dane will lead them in that mile. Or... I'll be at the finish line <laughs> with the water. <laughs> so maybe I'll lead them in the mile, and I'll keep, you know, chanting out little encouraging things like that to them so that they just keep pushing it. <laughs> Here's that one-handed thing again. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Camp number six is called Hallelujah, and Pastor Dane is going to be bringing the prayer series, and that one we're going to focus on music expression. So there's so many different things that you can do with music, but a small example is uh, we all know the Lauren Daigle song, You Say. So we play that song for them, have them all just listen to it, and then afterwards just have a group where we talk about it and how they felt about it and what they think the song's truly about so that they can pull things out of positive music and understand what it is to listen to good music because music can really, really influence them. Mm -hmm. Camp number seven is called Love Thy Neighbor. 
and Pastor Dane will bring who is God, and our focus is servanthood for that one. So just anything that we can think of that is teaching them to have a servant's heart. So one that stood out was just a day where we help around the church and any little thing, even if we come in here and we don't vacuum, hey, pick up every little piece of lint that you see. They might be like, meh. Mm -hmm. But it really teaches them to have a servant's heart because we're not using a vacuum. We're working hard, and we're working hard for the Lord. And camp number eight is called I Love My Pastor. And that series is the I Love My Bible. And our camp focus is pastor appreciation. So I don't want to give too much because some of it's a little bit of a surprise for you guys. So uh, we'll just do activities on our focus theme that show our appreciation to our pastor. So a little more of the details that kind of run through. Um, the camp will be open for children that are, going make sure in, I get this right. Going into first through going into sixth grade. So going into first grade, if you already completed kindergarten, you're going into first grade through completed fifth and going into sixth grade, you will be eligible for the camp. Yeah, and I think that was pretty much... That was it? Okay. Besides the fact that I'm really excited about it, and I just can't wait to get started because it's just so much that the kids will just really benefit from this, this camp so much because they can go to the Y, they can go wherever, and they can, yeah, they can do physical activity. They can, you know, work on some art projects, but they, they don't get the spiritual piece of it. So that's what makes our camp 10 million miles above everyone else's and just ties it in. So I'm just really excited about that. And... I can't wait till my little nuggets are old enough to go. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're probably going to be there anyway, running around. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you, Sister Nye. Can I give her a hand, please? You can stay up here. A couple more things about the camp, and then I'll hand it back over to Pastor John. First of all, um, I'm really, I'm honestly trying not to be biased, but there is nobody more equipped or better to be able to handle this than Sister Anaya. She has, um, yes. She has incredible um, amount of experience um, in all different areas. She works at a very difficult place with very, very difficult children. Um, think of the worst you ever seen a child behave in your life. Magnify that by 10. Multiply the amount of children by 15 to 20 in one room and every day, and that's what she has um, six years of experience in doing. Um, she can handle any situation. She's quick. She's creative. Um, she just gave you a little, like 5% of all the activities and the ideas that she has for your kids this summer. Look, guys, we are sold out to this. We are sold out to this. We want to provide a place for your kids to come to grow spiritually, emotionally, mentally. We want to come alongside you parents, but we need your help. We need you to believe in us. We're going to start for the kids in our church first. We're going to take care of home first. We have a limit of 12 kids per camp, okay? 12 kids per camp. As the years go on, I'd like to see 50, 60, 70 kids, maybe more in our camps. But in the inaugural year, this first year, we have a limit of 12 kids per week, okay? We are first only opening it up to people who are members of the church or who, people who come to our church. You don't have to have had taken the new members class to send your kid to this camp. If you're, if you're here today, if you come to our church, it is open for your children first. And we are hoping and, and, and uh, praying that all of you guys will uh, come alongside us and trust and believe in us and send your kids to these camps. There's eight of them all summer long. We have these camps for you. If down the line the numbers are a little bit low and the response isn't what we had hoped it to be from the parents and the children in our church, we will open it up to the community and to the public, and we will allow other kids from outside of the church to come in because, hey, if we got 12 spots available, that's 12 lives. 12 lives. We would love to start in... in, in and feed and grow and build into the children that are already here. So if we can fill up with all 12 kids from our church, that's great. That's our first goal. But if we're not getting that number or close to that number, we will open it up to the community because we're going to um, change the lives of 12 kids per week all summer regardless. That's, that's what our goal is. Um, 
price is. Yes, there is a price. We're not doing this to get rich. We're not doing this. You, I promise you won't see me rolling in come middle of July in a new Cadillac Escalade or anything. <laughs> uh, you know, these things uh, cost money. Food costs money. Colored pencils and basketballs and supplies cost money, okay? These things cost money. $50 a week for the first child. If you have more than one child, it would be $25 a week for the second child. Not to ever exceed $75 a week for any family. So if you have four kids, the most that you'll pay for all four of your kids to come all week is $75. $50 for the first, $25 a week. Now, how many of you guys know prices for like the YMCA or just a normal babysitter? $200 a week sometimes, right? We just want your kids to have a place to come to hear God's word every day, to worship him every day, to learn how to get quiet before him and pray and listen for his voice every day, to have somebody as incredible as my wife to be able to lead them through emotional management and through, through fitness and all of these other areas of life that are going to build strong character in our children. Those are the prices, okay? Um, like I said, 12 is the limit. And something very important, Pastor John said we need a small army to do his vision Well, um, I need to recruit some soldiers to my army, okay? You will be able to, at any point in time, uh, help us out with this camp. Anybody who wants to come and help to be um, a a staff member or a support member of the camp, please let me know. Try to let me know before the camp starts, I'd say before the end of June, because we do want to have get all together and have a little training and, and game planning and, and make sure everybody's on the same page. Now, I'm not asking you to commit all eight camps five days a week the whole summer. I'm not asking. I'm saying if you're willing to come in and help anytime you can. Anytime you can. If you can come on a Tuesday from 12 to 3. Come Tuesday from 12 to 3 to help. At any time, whenever you can, no matter how much or how small or what time of the day, one hour, five hours, eight hours, five days, one day, doesn't matter. If you are willing to be a part of this in any way, shape, or form, big or small, please come talk to me and Sister Anaya, and we'll get your name written down as a member of the staff, and we'll let you know when the training is, and we will get you signed up. And I, and I will tell you, we do need help. We need help. We need people to come alongside this vision. I I understand a lot of people work, and those are working hours. So that eliminates like 80% of everybody right there. But if there are people who have days off or they work from home or work evening shift or or, or you're not working, if you're retired, I don't know what the case may be, pray about it because we could really, really use your help. Um, You can come... hmm? Oh, yes. Also, for the kids' prices, I forgot one thing. Thank you. If, if you are not sending your kids the whole week, so a whole week's fee is, seven, is uh, 50 for the first, 25 for the second, no more than 75 for the whole family. But say that you just want to send your kids for two days that week. It's $10 per kid per day, not to ever exceed $75 in a week, okay? So if you can only send your kid a day or two, that's fine. Just $10 a day. Now, the money for uh, the camp for your kids, will, will, the fee will need to be paid the week before. The week before the camp your child will be attending, it needs to be paid. That way we have some time to game plan. We know how many people are coming, and we have the funds to go get the supplies that we need for the kids that are coming. And um, the part of your fee um, it will include uh, your pass for your kid to go to the swimming pool. So you don't have to pay any extra for the pool. That will be included in, in your fee, okay? Um, is there anything else? Yes. Yes. We, um, where are these at? On the table? Back on the table, we have these packets, copies of these, a whole bunch of them printed out. Pick one up, take them home. Uh, read over it, keep it. It has the names of all the dates. Everything that she explained to you is on here. Also, within the next couple of weeks, we will have sign-up forms. If you want to send your kids, if you want to say, hey, 
I'm sending my kid to every camp all summer long. I'm going to pay for it all up front. You can do that too. Okay, so within um, two weeks, we will have uh, sign-up forms and everything ready to go. And uh, you can come to me if you're already interested. If you want to come and get more details or interested in sending your kids, please come seek out um, Sister Anaya or myself. And if you come seek me, I'm just going to go find her because she's in charge. So, um, yeah, that's what we have for your kids this summer. We are so excited. We're sold out to this. And I hope that you guys are too. Amen. Isn't that exciting? I'm really excited about it. Um, I remember, I remember uh, Pastor Hagen telling a story. Uh, you know, Brother Hagen taught the Word of Faith for a lot of years, and Pastor Hagen is Brother Hagen's um, son. And uh, the Lord laid it on past Brother Hagen's heart to start a Bible school. And so he goes to um, Pastor Ken and, and Lynette, um, his wife, and he says, the Lord told me to start a, a Bible school, and I've never gone to Bible school, so you're going to run it. You're going to do it. He just came and said, and they did it. The Rama Bible Training Center came out of the heart of Brother Hagen, but Pastor Hagen and Sister Lynette Hagen, they were the forefront. They designed it, planned it, did all of it with it, and uh, um, that's good news, isn't it? That, that's that's how, how we like to do it. I started to feel in my spirit that we could probably take this step. This is stage four. This is the beginning of stage four. And uh, I mean, the, the, the opportunities are limit, you know, limitless. But we're, this is our starting point. And I thought, man, I think we could probably do it. Um, but I'm like, I'm not going to suggest it to um, Pastor Dane's sister, Anaya. Um, if, if they feel that we can do it, then they'll say something to me. And the only thing I did is I said, Dane, start, start bringing me some ideas what you want to do this summer. That's all I said. I did open a little, just put a little one out there. And he came, he came back and said, we want to do camps all summer long. I'm like, okay. What, what was in my heart was really, really um, good and true. And um, we're blessed that um, Sister Anaya has the, the summer off from her job. So she can, she can run this and do a good job for us and, and donate her summer into that. So um, if you have any questions about it, you're, like, like Pastor Dane said, your best bet is to go to them. And um, we're still working some kinks out and some things like that. Twelve slots, you know, um, we'll try to um, hopefully fill all 12 of those spots. As a church, if, if you would like to donate into our summer camps financially, you can do that. And um, it's a good, it's fertile ground. If you'd like to um, help us cover the cost, just put on the, um, on the uh, envelope summer camps. And we'll, we'll know that you're giving towards that. And, um, but we're going to get this started. We're going to start it off. And, and uh, I believe the children will be um, blessed. It's, it's basically going basically to be sort of uh, some form of vacation Bible school, but all summer long. That high energy. I see the adults, they like the, the vacation Bible school just as much as the children. I sneak in the back and the adults are, they're dancing and doing the stuff too <laughs> and everything. So we are so excited. If you want to be, like Pastor Dane said, if you want to be a part of it, you want to volunteer and help out in any way, go to them because they need to start organizing their, their um, list and getting things right in their mind. So remember that and um, talk to them about their any children and then we'll, we'll, um, we'll just put this together. Okay, I'm, at this time I'm going to ask for the prayer ministers to, to come up and they're going to be ready to pray here. And uh, the most important thing you can do too while they're coming up is remember to pray about this as well. Pray, seek the Lord on it um, as they're coming up. Ultimately, our desire, like Pastor Dane said, we, we want, we want uh, to reach the community. But you know that old saying, you got to crawl before you can walk or whatever. Um, we're just trying to find our lane, find our pace. That's a good word for it. Find our pace. And um, four years, four years down the line, here we are. We're taking another step of faith. But Lord willing, and with, with that building, we're, we're going to have a, a major, major ministry for children and youth. If you have any older teenagers 
it's been in my heart that the older teenagers would be able to help with the younger children. And so they can volunteer too and give us some of their time and be blessed in that way. Okay, would you rise, please? I wanted to let you know also that, uh, remind you, Brother Don's speaking tonight, so come on out tonight, 6 o'clock. Hour of power is the best hour of the week, in my opinion. It's fast-paced, hard-hitting. Uh, we have specials, and we have the Word, and then, then we go after it. And God bless you, and, and thank you for, for being a part of the church. And uh, let's pray. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, and I thank you, Lord, for every single um, soul that occupies one of these seats, Lord God, from, from the youngest to, to the oldest, Lord God. We are, we are one family, one body united by the Holy Spirit in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Father, that you promised us that whatever we turn our hands to, you will prosper it. So I'm going ahead and, and prophesying and speaking prosperity and, and, and a summer beyond our, our wildest imaginations of fun and, and, and spiritual growth and development, Lord, and, and to grow closer together as a church. And I thank you for these things, Lord. And now, Lord, I thank you for keeping everyone here safe and happy and healthy. Thank you for watching over their children and grandchildren. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.